Ever wonder how an 882-foot-tall, 92-foot-wide naval vessel nicknamed the Unsinkable ended up sinking and taking roughly two-thirds of its passengers with it? Well, you're in luck. Today, we're tackling the curious tale of the RMS Titanic, the stylish and supposedly safe behemoth of an ocean liner that now literally lies at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Some of you may think you know how this 20th century tragedy occurred. After all, we've all seen the 1997 film of the same name. But you may be shocked to learn that James Cameron, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Kate Winslet did not give us the most historically accurate interpretation of events. Although to be fair, the movie did bless us with an epic Celine Dion song. Now, for those of you that have been living under a rock or don't particularly care for maritime tragedies that occurred over 100 years ago, here's a quick rundown of the story of the Titanic. The Titanic was the biggest boat the world had ever seen. But she wasn't just the biggest, she was also the most luxurious and technologically advanced for her time. The Titanic had some of the world's wealthiest and most prominent people on board, enjoying the previously unheard of onboard amenities like a gym, swimming pool, libraries, and high-class restaurants. Its 2,224 passengers were even protected by advanced safety features like watertight compartments and doors. Nifty, right? A ship of that size with that many passengers needed space for a ton of lifeboats, and she had it. The Titanic had room for 48, more than enough for all the passengers and crew. Just one little hiccup. Due to outdated maritime laws and a good old-fashioned eye for style over safety, the Titanic only had 20 lifeboats on board, which could fit a grand total of 1,178 passengers. After all, it's better to put lives at risk than have a deck look too cluttered, right? Besides, this ship was unsinkable. What could possibly go wrong? Well, uh... Everything did go wrong. The Titanic hit an iceberg just four days into its maiden voyage, rupturing the hull of the ship and breaching several of its watertight compartments. The ship was sunk shortly after with only around 700 passengers escaping alive. There are a bunch of widely accepted reasons for the Titanic sinking. The most obvious one is the iceberg itself. Apparently, a bunch of other ships had been like, hey dude, watch out for icebergs, but the Titanic was like, yeah, whatever, and kept cruising at high speed. It was only once the crew's watchmen noticed the iceberg themselves that they thought, hey, let's not try crashing into this, but somehow they still did. Maybe the captain was sure that the sturdy, steel-plated Titanic could take any blow sent its way. Unfortunately, the ship was made out of a type of steel that becomes extremely brittle in the cold and cracks easily when hit. AKA, not the best metal for sailing through frigid water and preventing wild iceberg attacks. Now then, you can see how all of this is adding up to one big disaster, right? But still, there are a few questions that haven't been answered. Like, how come the ship wasn't able to dodge the iceberg? And how come the so-called unsinkable steamship sank so fast? Well, the truth has come to light, and it's all thanks to a woman named Louise Patton. Luis is the granddaughter of one of the officers on the ship and recently revealed the answers to the questions that have been asked by so many for over 100 years. But to really get them, you have to first understand some basic ship-turning lingo. Exciting, right? Basically, most of the Titanic's senior sailing staff had worked largely on sailboats, aka boats that move using wind power. Sailboats operate under opposite day rules, so in order to turn a sailboat left, you'd actually have to turn the steering wheel right. Weird, huh? However, the Titanic was a steamboat, and steamboats were a lot more straightforward. To turn a steamboat left, you guessed it, turn the steering wheel left, like a car. Well, you see where this is going, right? How this could end up being a classic case of miscommunication? Yep, you guessed it. In the panic, the ship's captain issued his orders as though the Titanic were a sailboat, while the steersman executed them as though she was a steamboat. By the time the mistake was caught, it was too late. So, that explains why the ship hit the iceberg. But why did it sink so fast afterwards? Well, my friends, it's a classic tale of pride and corporate greed. Apparently, Bruce Ismay, the chairman of the company that owned the Titanic, was on board the ship as it was sinking, and he was like, Oh no, dude, this is my investment. This ship is supposed to be unsinkable. We're gonna look so dumb if we're found like this. So, Ismay ordered that the ship move slow ahead, which we presume means to move ahead. Slowly. Unfortunately, this caused more water to flow through the ship's hull, with the pressure causing even more watertight rooms to rupture and the ship to sink unusually quickly. Luckily for him, Ismay managed to make it onto one of the few lifeboats. Guess that's what happens when you're rich, though, huh? 
Why exactly did it take so long for the alleged truth to come out? Well, Patton's granddad was on the lifeboat with Ismay, who supposedly told him that if the truth came out, the company would be found negligent, and that he and all his friends would lose their jobs. So he took the secret to his grave, telling only his immediate family. Speaking of graves, one mystery of the Titanic still remains. After the Titanic sank, only 340 bodies were found, while over 1,000 disappeared. Those that were found were either buried at sea or taken to a cemetery in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Those that weren't, well, we're not really sure. Swept away by a storm, taken down with the ship, or lost at sea. Think we'll ever find out what really happened to them? If we do, we'll be sure to let you know. Click the notification bell above to find out when the next Brainiac video goes live. Until next time, safe sailing out there, Brainiacs.